uh, by way of introduction, Mrs. Funke Agbo is uh, uh, Funke Agbo SAN is Adikpe Kun, uh, Kaxton Martins and Agbo and Shegun. She's a legal practitioner in the in the firm. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this um, session. This is about women in maritime and maritime training. Believe. And um, I think we have our speakers. I won't uh, waste too much time so that we can get on with the program. Um, obviously, women in shipping is, uh, women in maritime and maritime training is a very important aspect of maritime practice. And it is an area in which government and globally um, organizations and government have been looking into um, quite um, interestingly. Um, I was reading the other day that the Minister for Transportation uh, sometime last year made some comments about women in the industry and it's something that he was really interested in. And I know that um, in other countries there has been singular and deliberate efforts ma ma uh, made to try to ensure that women um, go into this industry and also thrive. So to hear about more about some of this, I think I'll invite the first speaker. So what is your topic? Yes, your topic is on state infrastructure to train. Okay, so I'll invite Ms. Ms. Um, Obiageli Obi, Director General, Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, to say a few words on infrastructure to train manpower in the maritime industry of Nigeria. Obviously, the overall theme of this roundtable is mari women in maritime and maritime training. I know Ms. Obi is very much involved in this aspect as well, and I'm sure that her paper at some point will just touch on that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. We've been here for quite a while. First of all, uh, I must thank my sister and friend, Mrs. Omore, for organizing this very ambitious and very auspicious maritime program. This topic is also basic to the interests and focus of my organization, Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, which has been especially enthusiastic about leading advocacy in capacity building and training amongst several other interventionist programs. We are poised to, power, to provide manpower training programs for all strata of the industry. However, the infrastructural support is a major challenge. First of all, let's understand what is capacity building. Capacity building often refers to the strengthening of skills, competencies, and abilities in people, including provision of infrastructure within an industry so that people can have competitive advantage in a global perspective. Let us take this particular spectrum of infrastructural challenge by asking what exactly is the state of infrastructure within the Nigerian social economy generally? The answer to this question will fly in the direction of a deficit within all the sectors of the Nigerian economy. The education center, sector in Nigeria, for instance, is notably burdened with huge infrastructural deficit. The bug of infrastructural deficiency bites deep into the maritime sector where it affects the quality and the quantity of manpower. Nigerian maritime industry with a coastline of 420 nautical miles has an approximate sea coverage of 84,000 nautical miles. The industry includes all organizations involved in designing, constructing, manufacturing, operating, supplying, acquiring, maintaining ships and shipboard equipment. It also includes enterprises engaged in operating and managing shipping lines, Steve Doring and brokerage services, insurance, maritime financing, and so many more, so much, so many others. Each one requires specialized training. Each one. Maritime related courses have a huge training cost. 
and therefore firstly they must be supported by various organizations and various programs from places like the Petroleum Trust, Trust uh, Technology Development Fund and the Nemasa Training Fund for it to succeed. These scholarship programs create special funding mechanisms for the maritime industry with inter internship, internship periods attached to them. The internship could be tied to local content initiative and used to close the professional gap in the industry. Today we've heard, all we've heard is the gap. When Jagal Niger Dock came on board, they talked about the professional gap. Every, the insurance talked about professional gap. Everybody is talking about professional gap. Inadequate funding and infrastructure deficit has been the albatross to the development of capacity building in the industry. If we bring it closer home, we have less than 10 tertiary institutions with accreditations to offer learning and academic instructions in maritime studies. I don't want to tell you when we talk about gender, we were told at a, at a, at a program that if we have 20 men apply for a training, there will be only about three women. So when we talk about the gender gap, it's something else. There are various private sector driven institutes providing one form of instruction or the other. We have the College of Fisheries and Maritime Technology. We have the Maritime Academy of Nigeria, ORO providing training for seafarers. This largely deals with nautical science, marine engineering, marine transportation, and naval architecture. Most of the mandatories for cadet training require appropriate stimulators. But are they there? Do they have them? Are these institutions providing the service that we need to bridge this gap. What about the training vessels for the completion of the seamanship training prior to obtaining their certificates for competencies? Are they in place? Maritime Academy of Nigeria, Man Oron, is the foremost nautical college in Nigeria, believed to have been set up to train Nigerian youths to become shipboard officers ratings and shore-based management personnel. However, the academy has trained only about 4,300 Nigerian Merchant Navy officers since inception out of the 50,000 seafarers that we need in the shipping industry to realize full potential. How is it going to happen? Training cadets, training a cadet is a capital intensive initiative. Although Man Oron receives 5% of the 3% freight levy from NIMASA as funding, the academy finds it challenging to attract the right source of personnel and provide teaching facilities adequate to handle the number of student intakes. The unavailability of ocean-going vessels which students need to complete the mandatory one-year CTEM has caused many students to seek for proper training in schools outside Nigeria. By far, the greatest area of infrastructural challenge we have is in this seafarers training, where thousands of youth have had to stay for years without completing their sea time aspect of the training due to the absence of training vessels. Do you know that no knowledge is better than half knowledge? Because half knowledge is frustrating. You can do anything with it. You can move on to your career with it. You're just there. And that's what's happening
to thousands of youth. Studies have shown that a major cause of the death of professionalism in the sector can be attributed to a lack of integrated training with the prerequisite C time in line with the standards of certification of seafarers and watchkeeping, the STC 95. In the past, NNSL provided the needed sea time for all cadres of marinas and this was periodically infused to short training. Today we don't have a fleet. We don't have a replacement. So we are like stuck in the ditch. However, I must applaud NIMASA for the National Seafarers Development Program which has given international cadetship training exposure to about 2,500 Nigerian youths in different places, India, Egypt, Philippines, UK and Romania. In order to stem the sea time challenge, NIMASA has engaged Egypt and UK for sea time training for our cadets on a continuing basis while still looking out for much of such opportunities. The Chamber of Shipping on its part has also picked in, the, in support of the Massa's efforts by securing the interest of a UK based university to provide sea time through NEMASA. This we are doing to complement what NEMASA is doing because we have thousands that have not completed, that can't get their COC. It is noteworthy to state here that other indigenous organizations like STARS Group, LNG, to mention a few, have engaged or are making concerted efforts to engage the waiting cadets on board cabotage vessels. This is instructive because the cabotage vessels will need to be manned by Nigerians. Therefore, capacity and confidence need to be built by giving employment to these young cadets. We also see councils like the freight forwarders, regulation of freight forwarders in Nigeria, CRFFN, they have made deliberate efforts to train and retrain their members and cost agents to arrest mediocre practice and infuse professionalism. I am of the view that a proper practical approach will involve the use of stimulators and intelligent classroom environment with computer-based instructions to bring them to speed with seamless real-time online digital practice that customs clearance and freight forwarding detail entails. The maritime industry in Nigeria is a very critical sector of the economy because Nigeria is a major oil and gas producer with an estimated population of 60 million people. Shipping is at the core of its activities. The Nigerian oil and gas sector, which is the mainstay of economy, requires huge shipping and logistics services for its operation. This subsection of the marine industry is largely dominated by foreigners. And the na nation has been losing about 4 billion US dollars to foreign ship owners yearly due to the lack of indigenous capacity in the local marine transportation. The foreign ship owners deny the nation's seafarers employment opportunities and are reluctant to invest in our local marine infrastructure development. The federal government intervention to enable accelerated economic development through increased local content is evidenced in the Nigerian Cabotage Act, Cabotage and Inland Shipping Act of 2003. The objectives of this act include building indigenous capacity in marine tonnage, shipbuilding and seafarers, acquire technical knowledge in ship management, shipbuilding and ship money. Although cabotage was pro promulgated to you support indigenous growth and participation, it is believed that the inadequate technical capacity of Nigerians and lack of disbursement of the CVFF 
to the indigenous operators according to guidelines in order to invest 